Good science to you everyone. This is Blair Bazdrich on behalf of This Week in Science. This is actually my second attempt at uploading a video to YouTube this week. The internet just don't want us to deliver the science this week, but I'm going to try anyway. I have two stories about sperm I want to go through very quickly because I don't think they can wait. I was really excited to talk about them, so I'm going to do it anyway, even though we had trouble with our Google platform this week. So I'm going to jump right into the science. First off, killer sperm. Everybody loves some killer sperm, right? Well, in a worm genus, Sanorhabditis, it's a type of nematode, researchers at the University of Maryland and the University of Toronto mated these guys with, different with worms of different species. And when they did that, they found that the lifespan and the number of progeny were drastically reduced compared to females that mated with the same species. What does that mean? When they mated these worms with different species, the females had less babies and they died sooner. This is killer sperm. That's right, killer sperm. So in addition, they found that females sur that survived the cross-species mating was often, they were often sterile, even if they mated with their own species afterwards. And when they looked at these worms under a microscope using a fluorescent stain, they discovered that these foreign sperm had broken through the sphincter of the worm's uterus and invaded her ovaries. There, the sperm prematurely fertilized the eggs, and then they were unable to develop into viable offspring, and the sperm eventually destroyed the ovaries, resulting in sterility. So even when these females survived the killer sperm, it made them sterile. The sperm then traveled through the worm's body and in most cases resulted eventually in tissue damage and death. Normally, speciation, the creation of a new species, happens when two species, when they mate, they don't create viable offspring. That's usually how we define a species, is that these two things can't make viable offspring. For example, a donkey and a horse they make a mule. The mules can't have babies. Not viable offspring, two separate species. That should be enough of a barrier to species, but it turns out for these nematodes it wasn't enough. And so this is a whole extra barrier to create a new species. If it kills the females that mate with the males of different species, that will keep these species separate. The way they figured out this was so different is that the, they took the, these three species of hermaphroditic worms. These hermaphroditic worms, they produced their own sperm and fertilized their own eggs. These guys were the most susceptible to sterility and death when they mated with males of other species. These hermaphroditic worms, for lack of a better term, were soft because their sperm were gentler. The sperm from the different species had intense fighting between each other, sperm competition inside the female, and most likely this is what ravaged the inside of the female, was the male sperm fighting inside the female's reproductive tract. Rough time for the female. And so what they see here is that this is a totally new way that we haven't seen before of creating a new species or defining a new species is when the sperm of another species downright kills the females or makes them sterile. Pretty crazy. So that's my first sperm story, killer sperm. On the other side of things, we have cooperative sperm. So deer mice, they looked at two different types of deer mice, these zoologists, these researchers. They looked at promiscuous species and they looked at a monogamous species. And what they found was in both cases, sperm actually cooperate. They clump together. And they like to travel in a pack. The sperm clump together. So there's a few questions here. Why? How? And how does it help? And what they found was that clumping together doesn't make them stronger, doesn't make them faster. It makes them move straighter. 
We always thought sperm was every man for himself. Every sperm is trying their darndest to get to that egg to deliver that genetic information. But it turns out these sperm can work together, make a big clump, go the straightest route to the egg, get there first as a clump. The sperm were more likely to clump in the promiscuous species because they're competing with other genetic material in there. But there was cl clumping in both cases. And through mathematical models and experimentation, these researchers looked at what the best size sperm clump was. Yes, scientists want to know, what is the most effective sperm clump size? They formed groups as large as 30 cells, but the ideal, it turns out, was eight. And the promiscuous sperm, the promiscuous mice, were more likely to create sperm that created these clumps of eight most easily, which makes perfect sense. It's more advantageous to get faster or more direct routes for sperm to eggs when you're competing with other genetic information. And I love this. The lead scientist says, in my view, we haven't so much answered the question as we've sharpened it. And we've done by that couching a conceptual notion of competition and cooperation in terms of physical and physiological variables that can be measured and lead to testable predictions. So through the combination of mathematical models and actual experimentation and observation, we've been able to hone what we know about what's going on in a reproductive tract. That's, that's kind of what I've learned from these two stories. There's so much going on with sperm we don't even know about yet. And every week I feel like I learn something new about getting those DNA bits to match up together to perpetuate genetic information. I think it's absolutely fantastic. But you know, if you're having trouble going to sleep tonight, thinking about killer sperm and cooperative sperm, and sperm of a feather that flock together. Twist fans, I want you to remember one thing. That is that no matter what's keeping you up at night, it's all in your head. Thanks. See you guys next week.